Howdy folks, Tom here from Laser Engraved Solutions and today we're going to talk about a waste grid. Uh, we'll actually build one in Lightburn. Uh, some people call it a alignment grid or a waste board, but we're going to make that in Lightburn today and if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around. <laughs> Okay, so first I want to say thank you. Um, the YouTube, uh, all of my metrics on the YouTube uh, channel is just amazing. And I want to say thank you so much for that. I basically went from five subscribers, which were all my friends or family, to 174 with 5.5 thousand views and over 386 watch hours. So I've only got three videos on there and I just, I want to thank you so much for that because that, that's awesome. It's very humbling that, uh, you watch my videos that much. I'm new at this video game. Um, I've been streaming online, uh, gameplay since 2017, 2016. And, uh, you know, I've done a lot of stuff like that, but nothing like tutorial videos like I'm doing with Lightburn. But I just want to share what I learned with you um, just to help the community. Um, there's so much room for uh, many more people doing laser etching and laser cutting um, ornaments and just all kinds of different things that you can make with this and sell. And there's a lot of money to be made in this space. So for that, thank you so much. Um, it's been a while since my last video. I actually don't even remember when I did the last video, maybe a couple weeks ago, but I ended up having some trouble with my computer. And that's why I actually, this is the second time I'm recording this video because I lost a SSD hard drive, which is the first time since 2016 I've ever lost an SSD drive. So if you know anything about computers, um, they're uh, way faster than a physical uh, spinning drive. So, uh, but I, I lost one and that happened to be the one that had all my video recordings on it. So it messed up my video editor and messed up uh, OBS, which is what I use to record this and the options to switch cameras. Now let's get into our waste grid. Now these are good for aligning um, things. Basically what a waste grid is, it's a, the way I understand it, it's a piece of wood that goes underneath your laser and it will show you where the marks are so you can easily align things like slate coasters um, or other keychains, whatever, and you don't have to build a jig for them. But anyway, let's get into light burn. And um, we will start this waste grid. So we're going to start with just a blank, blank screen, nothing on it. And the first thing we're going to do, because my laser is 400 by 415, I'm going to make a rectangle. And I'm going to go up here to the width, and I'm going to make it 400. 400. So I'm going to do my grid 400 by 400. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select move to page center. Now it's in the center and we can build from there. So basically what I envision is uh, boxes I've seen other people's waste grids. So the first one box is 400. And on this one, we're going to do 350. And we're going to go to select. And we're going to move to page center. All right. And now we're going to do one. Oops. Now we're going to do one. That's That one was 350. So this one will be 300. Oops, that's not right. I hit the wrong key. 300, tab, 300, enter, and select, and move to page center. 
So you can see where we've got our 400, our 350, and now our 300. And we're going to keep going down to 100. So I'll speed this up and uh, we'll stop at 100. Okay, so now we've got our grid starting at 400 and moving in increments of 50 all the way down to a 100 by 100 millimeter square. So now what we want to do is we want to make some, um, some other squares in here for like coasters. So we, I'm going to build those to the side here and then we'll... So we know we want our coasters are 4 inch by 4 inch. So if we come up here to the width and we type in four inches, just like that, even though we're in millimeters, it's going to do four inches and it'll convert it for us. So we hit enter and now four inches, enter. Now we have a, it's converted it to 101.6. So now we can take that and grab it. And I'm going to move it kind of like right there. Okay. Now we're going to come down here to our array tool. And we're going to tell it we want three. You can see it's. It's created three now. And then we're going to want to go three rows deep. Now, I've got reverse direction. If you don't have re reverse direction on, it's going to put them on top. So you want to turn, see how it put them up here? You want to turn on reverse direction. And that brings them down. And then I'll go one more row. Okay. So now we've got our array there with our with nine boxes for four inch coasters okay but you can tell it's not aligned correctly so what we're going to do is we're going to push our space bar not space shift i'm sorry shift and then we're going to click each of these squares and the middle one is going to elude me until the very end and i'm thinking it's going to be that one Okay, so now we're going to come up here and we're going to click group. So now our all of our nine squares are grouped together so we can move them as one unit. So now we'll just come in here and we'll move that group to page center. So now you can see everything is page center nice and centered up you can see that it's centered perfectly we probably don't really need that 100 uh, millimeter grid but we'll go ahead and leave it in now i want to add some circles for round coasters and we know those are four inch so they should fit perfectly inside the thing so we're going to take a circle and we're going to push shift so we get up Okay, circle tool, push shift, so we get a perfectly round circle. And then we'll go select it, and now we're going to say, again, 4 inch, 4 inch. So now that's a perfect circle that's 4 inches around, or in our case, 101 millimeters. So now we're going to put it right in the middle. And you can tell it's in the middle when your cursor changes. See how it's an arrow? Let me zoom in. See how it's an arrow right now? And then we get it right in the middle and it changes. So now that's perfectly in the middle of that one. We're going to go back over here to our array tool. 
and we're going to tell it we want three and we want three rows one two three okay so now we have our circles perfectly aligned in our squares and everything's perfect right there so now on my plywood sheet that is underneath my laser which is um 24 by by 30 i think it is so it's 24 inches across by 30 inches let me see if that camera will load up here so you can see i've already burned this like i say this is the second time i had to do this video so the first video had the burning in it but this one will not because i've lost that video file unfortunately but so you can tell it's just sitting on a piece of quarter inch plywood that I bought at Lowe's. And so now we want to add our text so we know what is what. So we're going to add our text here and we're going to call this one 400 millimeter. And that's too big a text right there. So we're going to go down to, let's go to 15. And then we'll move that to just inside that 400 millimeter line. Okay. And then we're going to control D that so we don't have to keep doing it over. And then this. And then we'll go to cursor, double click it. We know that this one is 350. So. And I will speed this up as well. Okay, so all of our text is done now. You can see that we've got from 400 to 100 millimeter and 50 millimeter increments. You could do this in inches if you have your uh, machine set to inches. doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to add some bullseyes. So I've got mine on a piece of plywood, and I've drawn around each of the legs with a pencil so that if I were to knock this out of alignment, I could align it back. But that might not be precise enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my template helpers, which is the uh, art library that I gave you in the last video. And I'm going to take my bullseye and I'm going to put one bullseye in the very center. So I'm going to move to page center. So that's in the very center. So that would be the first place that I would put my laser. I would move my laser to the very center. Now you could get your coordinates, get position. It'll tell you the laser position should be 200 by 200. I don't have a laser connected to this particular version of Lightburn. This computer is just uh, my video computer making videos and uh, designing stuff in Lightburn. So one bullseye is not enough. What if it's skewed a little to the left or right? So we're going to take another bullseye and I'm going to add it up here in the very top corner. And as you know, it changes and kind of snaps right to it. And I'll double click it and I'll get me another one and I'll put it down here in the front left. Now that gives us three bullseyes to make sure that it's not skewed. Let's just go ahead. I'm not going to put one in the upper left because there's so much. Uh, so much text up there. So I will put one in the, the bottom right. So basically you would put your laser to the very center, which we know that this is a 400 by 400 grid. So we want the laser to go to 200 um, and 200, which would put it right at the very center. Fire your laser with the move, move tab, fired at a very low percentage, and then line up your laser so that it, is perfectly on that mark. And then to go from there, you would use this tool over here, this uh, 
laser position and you would put it way up here in this corner and that should move the laser to where that is in your light burn file so then that would then you could skew your your board until you got it in the perfect position and between those two then you can double check with the other two and if everything lines up you're in perfect position as you were when you burned this file so you're going to have to burn this to the wood so that you have this grid and then we're going to turn it all into a tool path so that you can use this to do your engraving with okay so now the actual grid is done and let's go up here to our preview, which is right here. We're going to hit preview. Okay. And it's going to take us 16 minutes and seven seconds to do this. So I've got this set at 40 speed. Let's see how it does it. Okay. So it does. All right. So the first, it looks like our first coaster spot is not correctly in the center so we're going to have to look at that but you can see that it doesn't do it the way i would really want it to make this file so basically i would like it to do the first 400 millimeter square yeah so this one here is off so let's take this one i might have moved that i won't double check it yeah i might have moved it when i I didn't group it all right so I need okay so what I can do to verify that this is in the center is I click this now I click shift and click in the outer box and now I can come up here and align V center and align H center and that puts it exactly where it's supposed to okay Double check all these others. All the others look fine. So somehow that got off. I may have dragged it, whatever. But so we noticed that everything else looks perfectly centered. Okay, so as I said, I don't like how the preview burned it. I want it to burn. I'm going to zoom out so we can see everything at once. All right, this is where our layers come in. Okay, so everything right now is assigned to the line. And if I right click it, everything that is assigned to that layer is going to flash. So we want to change these layers so that it burns differently because it's going to burn in the order that you have from the top down. That's the priority of how the laser is going to work. So we want to take this very first. 400 by 400 line, and we're going to assign it to a new layer. And I use my blue for engraving down here. I use blue for, you can, you can basically use this for however you want. Any one of these except for T1 and T2. Those are tool paths. They will not be cut by your laser. Um, they're just used for guides and framing and whatnot. So my 01 or the blue layer is what I use for engraving. So it's set for engraving. And my zero two is my cut. So you can see it says fill and it says cut. I've already assigned those. So I'm going to assign the next one to layer three. And you can see up here in the layers that now line three is our outer 400 millimeter line. Okay, so now we wanna to go to the next line and we're going to just assign them in order. So the next one is going to be four. And then if we right click it, it'll flash. And then this next line is going to be five. And this next line is going to be six. The next line will be seven. I'm going to skip the gray one because the gray is hard to see. So I'm going to go to the nine. Now we want the inside circle. And that's going to be layer 10 because we know that the coaster layer is 101 millimeters. So the smaller of the two squares. Okay. So now I'm going to take and we're going to do all of the squares. So somehow this 
this okay and then I want to add that one to my group okay so now all the squares are going to be 11 line 11 and then we're going to do all of the circles will be another layer so again you hit shift and then just go click on all of your circles but you got to get just right where it changes so you're not selecting anything else All right, so all of our circles are now, and we're going to assign that to layer 12. Okay, and then our engraving, and I'm going to hit shift and select all of those. And try not to get any of the lines that they're connected to. Those are all going to go to my engrave layer or layer one. So now all that's left. See, if you right click it, that all shows all that. Now all the squares and now each of the rectangles or squares in our. So you just right click them. So now these are only assigned, the, the bullseyes are only assigned to uh, layer zero or the black layer. Okay, so that's our file. Now we need to align these because if we were to preview it, it's still going to do it in a, in a weird way. So it did the bullseyes first and then it did all of this. So I want it to do, I want it to do the outer layer first. So we're going to move the cut layer. Or not the cut layer, but layer zero, our line layer. We're going to move it to the very bottom. And you can just grab it and move it. And now it's at the bottom. Or you can use these arrow keys right over here to select the layer and move it however you want. And it'll move the layer. So now we have it going in order. The, um, the big square, the 400 millimeter, then the 350 so on and so forth down our line until we get to the very end. Now we've upped our time. It's now 2303, but it does the big square and I've got it doing it twice at 75% power. And now it does the squares and then it's going to do all the circles. And now it's going to do the text. So I'm going to see. Everything has two passes. And that's because I kind of want it a little darker. So it's at 2000 millimeters per minute. And 75 power. And two passes. Okay. So our grid is done. All we need to do now is is burn it okay so let's save this file file save as and i think i called it waste board so i need to change it to something else yeah waste grid i need to change it to waste grid i'm going to call it two because i've already done this all right, so now we have our file. Now, the next thing we need to do after we've burned this to our piece of plywood that sits under our laser, we need to turn this all into a tool path so that it doesn't try to burn it again. So let's go, let's go here and we'll just select everything. So we'll just draw a box around it. Now everything is spinning. Okay, and now you can also go this way. If you go up from the bottom right, it will select everything. If you go from the top left down, it will select just the things that you cover 100%. So in other words, if you only get half of this square, 
it's only it won't include it it will only include the other two things it has to be completely encompassed in your red line now as i told you you can change these so mine says fill and here's how you do that double click your layer okay and just change the name from c01 to c well i say o0 c01 to c02 and then you can change all of this information here in this dialog so you set your this is where you set your speed millimeters per minute and your power and your mode is fill because this is the engraved path this is not a line mode okay so you have three choices line fill or offset fill okay then you've got your lines per inch your scan angle number of passes so i only do one pass on my engraving but i do two passes on the lines so you just change your change your name and click ok and now it shows up here as fill and down here when you select it it'll pop up the tooltip for fill so those are your layers now this is line mode here when you i have number of passes as two now one thing i'll show you in your fill Let's go see. I've got flood fill turned on. And the way it does flood fill is it'll do each individual letter completely before it moves on to the next. Whereas in normal, it'll just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So flood fill will do that. And it does save you some time on larger engravings. It's not going to save us any time on this one. So the next thing you do is you go burn this, burn it to your grid. And then once you're done burning it, you're going to want to select everything in the file. And you're going to change it to a toolpath. That gets rid of all of our layers. But now we have a nice toolpath that we can see all the squares. We know what they are where they are okay and then you're going to want to save that and i would suggest saving it as waste grid 2 and then i always put engrave after it so i know that that's a toolpath a file and it's ready for engraving so now all you have to do to engrave is say you want to do a round coaster okay down here in the corner, we're going to do one, one round coaster. Let's put it in the middle. Okay, so we'll take our, our graphic that we want to put in there. Okay, so for me, I'm going to use this TriStar to do a round coaster. So I would load a round coaster in the exact center on your waste grid. And then I would have this. And you can change this to your engrave layer or to how whatever you want to do for your slate coasters i'm going to use the fill bi-directional fill but now i'm going to do cross hatch because cross hatch goes left to right left to right then it goes top to bottom top to bottom and i also want fill shapes individually so bi-directional fill you can flood fill let's see Let's see what our time is. Now, since that's the only thing output, the time for this one coaster is an hour and four minutes. Why? Because of all these traversal moves in here. See, all the red is traversal moves. We don't want that. So we're going to go back to this layer, and we're going to go to Advanced, and we're going to go to Flood Fill. We're going to click OK. And now we'll go here. And now it dropped... So it dropped it to 23 minutes and there's very few traversal moves. As you can see, there's just a few going from object to object. All right, so that's how you build your board, turn it all into a tool path to use as guides, and then you can add your stuff to engrave on. 
It could be anything. It doesn't have to be a coaster. This is not just for coasters. Um, say you do a hip flask or something. And so you'll put it in this 100 millimeter square down in this corner. And then you'll add your, in my case, I would do a tri-star. So I would move the tri-star so that it was where the hip flask was. And there, there you go. So now you can engrave. So that's how you create a waste grid or alignment grid, waste board, whatever people call it. And we went through and did everything. We talked a little bit about the layers. We can get into uh, layers a little bit more and sub layers uh, a little later. But for now, um, that's pretty much all that you need to know to build your own waste grid and start engraving all of your products, your cool things. I just got in some hip flasks that are really neat. I'm going to start engraving on some glass um etching i guess you'd call it not engraving um i've got some leather patches for hats i'm going to create some custom hats so let me know what in the comments what you're what you're working on i'd love to read the comments and i'd love it if you subscribe and if you enjoyed this video or got some use out of it give me a thumbs up i really appreciate that it really does help it uh, motivates me to create more videos just like this one so until the next video bye bye